Hey guys, Brad McDonald here, founder of Pattern Talent. I'm super excited today to walk you through one of my favorite leadership tools from Five Capitals. It's called the Five Capitals Flywheel, and it deals with five areas of every leader's life that they need to master in order to develop themselves, to become all they're capable of, and that they need to be able to develop into the people who are following them in order to see those people thrive and flourish as well. When we talk about the Five Capitals Flywheel, Ultimately, what we're talking about are the resources that we have access to in our life. So the first one is gonna be spiritual, then we're gonna have relational, then we're gonna have physical, intellectual, and financial. So each one of these resources is going to be giving us a currency to exchange. And as we exchange those currencies, we'll see all of the capitals increase in value and abundance. This flywheel of principles serves me in three ways. The first one is that it serves me as a mirror. It's a way for me to look at myself and determine how well I'm doing. Am I healthy right now? Am I growing? Is my mindset one of abundance and growth or is it one of scarcity? The second is a window. It allows me a lens through which to see other people around me and to determine if whether or not they're healthy people. Are they flourishing? Are they living a life with an abundance mindset or a scarcity mindset? And finally, it serves as a picture, a picture of what reality is and what reality actually should be. The first one we said is spiritual, all right? The currency of spiritual capital is wisdom and power. So we live in a world that exchanges knowledge and skills. The knowledge people hire the skill people to get their work done. The skill people hire the knowledge people so that they know the most efficient way to execute their skills. There is a higher plane of thinking and that is with wisdom and power. See, wisdom is the intersection of knowledge and skill. It's knowledge rightly applied. Power is about understanding the capacity that each of us have to be the person we were made to be and to do the things that we were created to do. Spiritual capital is about understanding that we are all capable of so much more than we realize if we just apply ourselves to achieve it. So next I wanna talk about relational capital, all right? What's the currency of relational capital? It's influence and impact, okay? So influence and impact. Influence is what happens when we're together. Impact is what happens when we depart. When we're together, I have the opportunity to look you in the eye, to talk to you. Even here on this video, I have the opportunity to disseminate this information to you, maybe things you've never heard of before. When you close YouTube, we're not gonna be together anymore. And so what will be left from the time that we were together is the impact that I had on you. It was what you realized when we were together. That's influence. But what you do with it is impact. The currency of relational capital is the influence we have on one another, and it's the impact we leave on one another when we part ways. The next thing I wanna talk about is one of my favorites to talk about right now, and it's physical capital. The currency of physical capital is time, energy, and focus. We all have 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Unless your name's Ed Milet, that's what you got. We all have a question though of the amount of energy that we bring to our lives. What do we think about when we think about our energy? We think of number one, first and foremost, about our mindset. We think about our sleep, our diet, our exercise, and especially how we're managing our stress. This is what we mean when we talk about energy. The one that we oftentimes don't talk about enough is focus. Focus is all about how we orient our minds. The most important areas to focus on when we talk about the five capitals flywheel is abundance. Do we believe that we even have the capability of living life to the full? Do we believe that there is a good and beautiful and true life out there for us to achieve? Or are we getting stuck in a doom loop of discouragement and scarcity. What we have to do is focus our minds on the opportunities that are before us and on the potential that we can achieve and how to execute on the things that we need to do in order to achieve those things. Number four, intellectual capital. This is one of my favorite capitals to talk about. Intellectual capital is all about the trade of 
ideas. This is like podcasting, book reading, you watching this YouTube video, me introducing you to some new knowledge that you haven't encountered yet. It's about our ability to learn from every experience in life. Oftentimes, we import intellectual capital into spiritual capital and we confuse the two. Intellectual capital is really where knowledge is found. It's where we develop the new information that we need in order to live the full and the abundant life. So we've got to read books. We've got to watch YouTube videos. We have to avail ourselves to new information. And that cliche, your life is determined by the people you meet and the books you read. It's a cliche because it's true. It's a cliche because it is very accurate. Your friends will determine who you are and you will determine who your friends are. So we have to supplement those people in our life with mentors from history. There's a famous philosopher who said, he who cannot draw on 3,000 years is living from hand to mouth. And I think that's so true. We're all born into the family we're born into, the society we're born into, but we can import mentors from 3,000 years of history, from podcasts, from books, from anything and everything we can expose ourselves to, to introduce new knowledge and learning. On another video, which I'll link in the comments, we're gonna talk about the learning circle. And that learning circle is the methodology for building your own learning process. What we're talking about with intellectual capital is ideas and concepts. We're talking about the people we meet, the books we read, and those whom we choose to allow to mentor us and those who we follow and how they introduce new and novel concepts into our life that we can then apply. All right, lastly, but certainly not least, we're talking about financial capital, all right? When we use the word capital, this is typically the, the place that all of our minds go. We think about cash, cash is king. We think about assets and liabilities, right? And that is how we, we talk about financial capital. It's important for us to remember that when we're talking about financial capital, we're talking about our needs, we're talking about our wants, and don't forget, we're talking about generosity. So for us as leaders, financial capital isn't just about our own wealth. It's not just about our own personal finance, but it's about understanding things like business finance, profit and loss statement, balance sheet, statement of cash flows. Those are all important skills that we need to understand if we're going to lead in the business context and if we're going to help other people be financially literate. But we don't want to stop there. We want to be able to understand that we, we live in a world that is abundant with opportunity. The generous heart is one of the most important factors in drawing in and building financial wealth in your life. Without generosity, without the practice of giving money away with no expectation in return, you cannot ultimately build strong, sustainable financial wealth because you can't have an abundance mentality. When we talk about the five capitals, the big message that I want to convey to you is that net worth is more than just a financial process. That net worth is about being wealthy as a whole person. And to be a great leader, you need to begin to understand that your net worth is bigger than just your balance sheet. It has to do with your spiritual health, your relational health, your physical health, and your intellectual health as well. I hope that you found this tool helpful. If you did, like, make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet, leave a comment below, and tag someone if you think that they need to hear this message too. Thanks, and we'll see you next time on Pattern Talent.